I have a dream for small cities, for I believe that small cities are wonderful and inspiring places to, to live. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience in the areas of economic development and planning. I want to talk a little bit about some of my thoughts and observations and some of the development trends that have shaped development within our United States. Obviously, the first trend is suburbanization. Suburbanization in its simplest form is just simply the movement of people away from a community's core. It began sort of after World War II to very uh, real degrees. It is still going on today. However, it is being placed with, with something that I think is much more dynamic. And that is the concept of placemaking. Placemaking is the innovative and design of public and private spaces. These public and private spaces are shared and around these public and private spaces, new development is created. It has an emphasis on downtowns, neighborhoods, and community image. But what is very significant about this process and what is important about the places that, that we live is that where we live shapes who we become. It shapes the mind of our children and it, and it directs future development. Next, for today's purpose, I want to talk a little bit about and kind of understand what is a small city. The U.S. Census Bureau defines urbanized places as any place that has 50,000 persons with a density of at least 1,000 persons per square mile. Given that, there are 500 urbanized places in, in the United States. For my purposes today, I consider a small city a place that has an urbanized population of less than 200,000 persons. Given that, and given that the fact that Florence, South Carolina has an urbanized population of 90,000, then we really fit very well into that definition. But also what's important to consider is that there are 320 urbanized spaces that are a similar size, similar interest, and compete with us for jobs, economic development opportunities, and for community image. Now I want us to kind of follow along with a few premises or concepts, and I want you to think about these as, as I kind of move forward through the rest of my discussion. First, I want us to, to take the position or try to understand, and certainly I think we do, that where we choose to live is one of the most important decisions that we will ever make. There are very many variables to, to that decision, but that decision is, is, is extremely important because that decision shapes how we feel about where we live and who we become. It influences us greatly in how we deal with the people around us. Second, I want you to think about why cities. And this is relatively simple, but certainly cities are the centers of commerce. They are often the seat of government. And with their collective population and, and economic wealth, that cities influence the arts, the culture, Therefore, they influence society. And how, and how well they do that is really dependent on how well they do that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's think about why cities and what makes cities great places to, to be, and particularly as it relates to small cities. For small cities in comparison to large cities, typically are very personal. We kind of go through life. We, um, it is very easy for us that come from small cities to recognize that, kind of remember that, that football game against a crosstown arrival. It is not unusual for us to kind of experience one mall or other type social venue. We played in recreational sports with friends and acquaintances from other neighborhoods and other schools. 
Therefore, small cities tend to be very personal. They have a rich shared experience. But also, and it is very reasonable to consider this, that small cities can also feel confining. They sometimes might be limiting. And it's not all, it is fairly common for a mentor, a family member, a teacher, to say if you are going to gain knowledge, if you're going to experience the world, then you have to leave the place that you grew up to experience and learn and, and enjoy that, that experience. Some of that is certainly true, but, is, but it is not necessarily the concept that I, that I take hold of. Because I believe with the right set of circumstances, the right kind of leadership, the right kind of resources being put forward, that small cities can be truly distinctive and interesting and fun places to, to live. It is a challenge, though, for us to be able to, to achieve that. And I would imagine that if I took individuals from this room and we went to a table in another, in another part of this building, that we could sit around that table and in, in a relatively short period of time, we could come up with the features that make for great places to live. And if we did that, I believe that list would look very similar to this. Features that make for great places to live. That, that character and image is important. That is, that the form and type of development is attractive and appealing that our parks and green spaces are connected to our neighborhoods, that our neighborhoods are connected to, to the larger community, and those are integral parts of who we are and how we relate to ourselves and, and the place that we live. That entertainment is available, it's varied, it's interesting. We have movie theaters, we have breweries, we have good places to go, interesting restaurants. And that entertainment is designed for both young and the old. That diversity is a part of who we are, whether it's in the arts or in culture, whether it's in people, or whether it's in the concept of ideas. That, that public safety, that we feel and are safe in the very spaces that we live and go. That we would have a strong economy, that that economy would produce living wages, that those, that those jobs would be interesting and they would keep us here and our children here. We would have access to public health and that access to public health, good hospitals, would be affordable. We would be socially engaged, not unlike today. We'd be socially engaged in community and family. That we would have a distinctive city that where we go, who we speak to, if we're in another part of, part of the state or the country, and we say we are from South Florence, South Carolina, that we have a sense of pride, and many people know who we are, and that they have been here and seen our, seen our community, and we just have a sense of goodness about that, that feeling. That we have a healthy downtown, sustainable, growing, because downtowns give us identity. We have strong neighborhoods, affordable housing. We have interesting retail and things to do. And our community is clean, efficient, and we're proud of that aspect. Now, given that, it is relatively simple for us to kind of say, hey, these are the things that, that we want because we've experienced them, we've read about them, we have witnessed them in some way, shape, or form. But the real struggle is not imagining what we want, not imagining what our dream is or what we desire, but being able to, to be in the position to create it. And that is the real crutch of the problem and the challenge and the dream for our city, Florence, South Carolina. <clears throat> A, a short while ago, I read an article written by James Fallow, who writes for the Atlantic magazine. 
He, he had traveled around the country, and he only visited cities that were successful. And, and in, that, in those interviews and observations, he very concisely described why some cities are successful and others are not. I'm going to kind of go through that list in, in just a moment. But obviously, there are other people who have done, done that as well. But it is this challenge that is so critical to our success. Traits that produce a place that inspires, a place that we want to live, that we want our children to, to grow in. We do not immerse ourselves in national politics, the diverse nature of national politics. What we do is we find practical solutions to local problems. We have a shared vision. That vision can be articulated by our community leaders. We have true community leaders and committed citizens. And it's not really so important that they be somebody from a captain of industry or somebody from government. What's important is that we have them and we know who they are and that these individuals are committed for the good of our community in ways that kind of, the ways that are different than just about private investment. We use incentives to move forward the public interest. Incentives create economic opportunity. Incentives drive redevelopment in our neighborhoods and our downtowns. But they are always applied appropriately and they're always applied in a manner that moves the public will, the public interest in a positive and appropriate way. That we have reasonable regulations, that those re regulations cause good development, that those regulations protect the environment, that we have true public-private partnerships. That is, the city working with the county, the city working with the state, the city working with the foundation, and that those individuals are collaborative and they produce real results. We have an exciting, sustainable downtown. A downtown is, is kind of an interesting concept, but a downtown brings identity and association to a community. We have school systems that are engaged, but more importantly, our school system has to teach our young people the skills that they need for a rapidly changing job market. They've got to be dynamic, they should be unusual, and they should be challenging. Diversity and the concept of diversity is welcome. We share ideas. We have all kinds of, of interesting and fun things to do. For the worst cost to a community is the loss of young people to other places because we are not inclusive or, or an interesting place to live. And finally, I think one of the most incredibly important tools and it's very similar to sort of the real estate maxim of location, location, location. You have got to co cooperate, cooperate, cooperate. These traits are my dream for our community. Florence, South Carolina has come a long way in a very short period of time. It has, it has taken a lot of people working very long hours with a vision to cause that to happen. But we still have a very long way, way to go. And that is my dream. My dream is to work in a place where people set aside partisan politics. They know when they need to check their ego. And we move forward our community in a positive and real way. That is my dream. Thank you.